In part one, we tried and failed to get old Yella here down to a respectable racing weight. Ball out. So we need to search elsewhere to add some more lightness. And we think we know where to start looking. In fairness, these seats aren't particularly heavy in themselves, but removing them will facilitate access to something that's a lot more substantial. Here's your seat, mister. It's very unlikely they'll go back in the truck again, now that they're out. The next job is to remove the engine cover, which is held down by a multitude of M6 bolts. The seatbelt clips are anchored to this cover and not the main cab, so it's a good job they used plenty of fasteners to keep it secured to the truck. The spare wheel was just loose in the truck when we bought it, so we just wadged a hole through the floor and bolted it down. 18 volts, baby! It's surprisingly heavy. The truck builders thoughtfully added an access hatch, presumably so one could gaze down at the horror of what lurks beneath the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce six cylinders, six litres and about 110 horsepower when it was new of diesel fury that is the Ford Dover engine. Originally designed in 1773 by James Watt, the idea was quickly shelved in favour of the much smaller and much more efficient steam engine. It was reimagined in the early 80s by Ford, who used it as an industrial engine. It went into trucks, buses, boats, or any application, really, where they just needed to turn diesel into noise. It's not all bad news in our case, though, because along with the deafening racket, you get the acrid smoke. Now, to be fair, we could probably do something about both of those issues, but the crowning turd on the dung heap in this application is the Ford 4-speed heavy-duty gearbox attached to the back of the engine. It weighs as much as a small moon, you need to be a Russian female shot putter to change gear, and there's a postcode between all of the gear ratios. It's got to go. First, jack up your truck. Then add in a couple of heavy duty six ton axle stands. We go in. Should be fine. You ready? All right. How's she looking? Mend. Yeah? Still okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, lock her off of that. Done. The larger of our selection of cheetah bars is employed to undo the wheel nuts. Our clapped out compressor didn't have the waft necessary to drive the three quarter impact gun, so some old school brute force and ignorance made up for the lack of CFMs. With the wheels off, we noticed a worrying bulge in one of the brake lines. So apparent was it that you could see it deform when Nick pushes the brake pedal. If you've got rubber flexible brake hoses, please check them regularly. 
On most trucks, to remove the engine and gearbox, you'd tilt the cab forward, undo all the fuel, electrics, air pipes, etc., and then hoik it out the top. Unfortunately for us, our cab is fixed in place and cannot be tilted due to the cab through design of the body. So we've got to pull it out from underneath. This necessitates the removal of the front axle, starting with the steering drag link. Cool. You know what your problem is? You're just not a destructive person. <laughs> I'm really not. Aha! Have you got your ear defenders on? Pardon? Have you got your ear defenders on? Gotcha. Three. Oh, hell yeah! Whoa! Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> With the drag link oh, and the anti roll bar disconnected, it's time to tackle the damper. Oh yes. That was about that then. She's a real. Alright, so that's that bit. Uh, to the side. Yeah, alright. The near side disassembly was done in much the same fashion. I cannot actually believe they both come undone. Believe it, baby. Believe it. Right, that's cool. Right. Spring hanging. You reckon? Not a hope, but we'll <laughs> give it a go, shall we? Nope. These spring hanger bolts demanded the use of some leverage. There you go. That's more like that. Yep. I think it went. I don't know. Check the shape of the bar. No, we're all right. <laughs> it's all right. Get out of it. Oh. <laughs> oh, I got it. Side, more or less. Yeah, tight on my side. Shock is clear. Anti-roll was more or less. Anti-roll was clear. Right, on the deck, so I just need to bar on that front spring. definitely won't be using these hoses again, so they're chopped off and the ends plugged up with a bolt. Now the axle is free and can be extracted from under the truck. Right. 
we weighed this front axle assembly and found it to be 254 kilos. That's a quarter of a ton, or 560 American freedom units. Anyway, we were pleasantly surprised, nay shocked, at how easy it came out. You don't tend to see 35-year-old trucks with bolts in such good nick as these. With the axle out of the way, we can now get into pulling apart the heart of the truck, starting with a bumper that's seen better days. Then the grill comes off to be safely stored away. The step is next for the windy gun treatment. Getting the shockers off their brackets is next on the to-do list. Oh. I think it went. Oh yes it did. There is just no way this thing should be coming apart like this. Well, so far, okay. While it was sat for a few weeks, we noticed that the radiator leaked like a sieve and was dribbling all over our floor. So now it's time to get rid of it. You got a half inch drive six mil. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, you know. Frickin' vandal. It just broke. I don't want to get wet. this off here and come down with the radiator. No. Should be fine, shouldn't it? Something's actually happening, Rich. Sweet. Oh yes. That's cool. Right. That's okay from this end. Now we've got to get the brackets off. No power tools are involved. Boo, boo. <laughs> I 
Next to come off is the exhaust. There's simply no conceivable way that these three old nuts are coming off the exhaust flange. We'll surely be reaching for the angle grinder in a minute. Here you go. I'm not sure. Hard to tell, I think. Maybe. I'll spin this right round. It'll be right round. Like a record. Oh, it did, I think. He did. More? More. You're a lunatic. I like it. Give over. Well. <laughs> I'm saying nothing. <laughs> Not after last time. You saw the comment. I know. I want, a, I want a door that sounds like that. That's awesome. What are the chances we're going to get lucky three times in a row? I believe if I was 12, I would be saying O-M-F-G. Well, I don't know about you, but I wasn't particularly hopeful that we wouldn't grind her out by now. And uh, it's a shame, isn't it? There will be opportunities, don't worry. Be prepared for the oil slick. Well, tea time. We couldn't let the opportunity to cut something off just pass us by, now could we? Right, let's drag that thing out of there. Disconnecting the prop shaft is the next task. Should be straightforward, it's only four bolts. Now, do you want to actually strap it? I don't care, I'm not underneath it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yes, I'd like to actually strap it, because <laughs> I'm underneath it. Back in two. Now for the speedo drive. Pretty sure cutting that seal is a criminal offence. Lock me up. There we go, I undid the reverse light switch for me. Oh thanks mate, appreciate you here. This is the main airline from the pump on the engine to the receivers. Rocking the double adjustable. 
Is the vein on the side of your head supposed to do that? <laughs> it's a design feature. Pressure relief valve. Yeah. Gosh. God. Get on. Yeah, it is a swivel. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's fucking gone. Fuck me. Oh yeah. All right. Oh shit! Sorry, mate. What? I have to put it back together and redo it. I forgot to hit record. Oh, that's tough shit. <laughs> A few electrical cables need undoing next. And then go like this. <coughs> well, yeah. Well, that was, uh... Yeah, okay. <coughs> See if I can do that. Yes! The gear stick. If you're lucky. Oh, oh that was easy. This crusty old hardened vacuum line needs a little heat to persuade it to give up its grip. The air filter is in a particularly awkward position. It didn't want to come out without a fight. With the air filter out of the way, the rest of the huge gear shift tower is accessible and is held in place by six bolts. Two at the front here, and four screwed into the block. There's diesel in your face. Yeah, there's diesel in your eye. Okay. There's still a few more electrical components that need pulling off. Alternator free. You may be asking yourself why go to all the trouble to take it apart properly and not just gas axe it to pieces. A fair question with two reasons. One, we don't have a gas axe, and two, we don't have a gas axe. That may seem only like one reason, but it was such a big reason I thought it deserved mentioning twice. Okay, I'm clear here, mate. Here's a yank. Got it. Cool. This is the main fuel feed in from the tank. You haven't sprayed this, mate. You let me down. I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> well, what you can do next time. And this is the fuel return line to the tank. Cool. All right. Fuel out of the way. Apart from that one you forgot on it. Oh, this one down here. Yours. <laughs> The oil filler tube is huge and it comes from inside a flat behind the cab, down this black tube and into the sump. I think will come down. I would think it'll come down with the motor. With the block. There you go, she's off anyway, more or less. Definitely coming down, that's fine. This is the stop cable. 
You don't just turn the key off and the engine stops like any normal vehicle. Oh no. On this engine, you need to pull a knob which pulls this cable and shuts off the fuel. Oh, I see. That was easy. And this one is the throttle cable. The clamp that fixes the cable outer had two seized little screws, so the finger sander whips the heads off and the screwdriver does the rest. There we go. Before we pull the power steering lines, the reservoir is emptied with a vacuum extraction pump. Do you reckon you can pull it? What, with you in there with the screws on? Yeah. Mint! I've undone the heater pipes and this link pipe is one of the last things to come off before we can drop the motor. If you're lifting this engine out the top, it's not an issue, but the inlet manifold is proud of the chassis rail, so unfortunately there's more crusty nuts to contend with before this thing can come down. To make this job a bit easier, we whipped up our hydraulic lifting platform so we can lower the engine down in a controlled manner and roll it out from underneath on the wheels. Before we can lower the engine, we have to get rid of two cross members. There's one big one under the gearbox with the two mounts on it, and one at the front. You can see that one below the fan. The idea is to take the weight of the engine on the platform, undo the gearbox mounts, raise the engine up to clear them, then undo the cross member and slide it back out of the way. That's the plan anyway. The big Dover leans over at a fair angle, yep, so this yep. steel box section should prevent it falling down when all the mounts are taken off. I think it's safe to say we've got the weight. <laughs> we certainly have. With the mounts all off, let's lift this beast up. That should do you. Now we can undo the cross member. Right, you. I'll take that to the bank. Two hammers are needed for this next bit. Oh, you're ready. Right. The 
front cross member now needs to come out. You might be as amazed as we were about just how easy some of these nuts and bolts are coming off. In fairness, we did spray every fastener we could see with penetrating fluid a week in advance just to give ourselves half a chance. Seems to have worked. Time to lower this motor. Let's just hope it's not a big letdown. Coming down. Very gently. Okay, Woody up. Okay. Woody up. Coming for us. you like now until we hit the prop flange. Yeah? Yeah. Come down. That'll do, yeah? That's all I got really. That's it. We're on the deck? No, I can't be though. There you go. Self-clearance. So go all the way down? Try it. That's it. She's a beaut. The final thing to come off is this big cross member at the front. Now the engine is clear and we should be able to just roll it out. After the extraction, we refitted the bits we removed so we can get a true weight for the engine and gearbox assembly. It really is a monster compared to what we normally deal with. Any guesses to what it's going to weigh? Well there you have it, three quarters of a ton of crushing disappointment. We even tried it with a slice of lime. Still crap. So I guess it's off to the scrapyard for this. Ooh no, I ain't scrapping it. Why not? Well, there's a chance it might get recycled into another Prius. I don't need that on my conscience. Well, I suppose it'd make a pretty good boat anchor. Uh, I'm guessing it will be slow and noisy getting to the bottom. Hmm. Are there any redeeming features? Well, it's not as pointless as an X6.